All right. Eric, that was a uh, pretty wild finish. I'm not sure if you've ever crossed the finish line backwards before, but take us through that race uh, and especially that finish, please. Yeah, so close uh, with our Smithfield Ford Mustang. We had uh, the strategy of kind of uh, riding around and surviving uh, most of the race. You know, we didn't race very aggressively uh, early on in the race. And as the, uh, as the laps wound down, I uh, got to the front and then I got shuffled. And then uh, right there on that restart, we found ourselves back in position and uh, we had a really fast Ford Mustang. And I thought uh, when everybody started getting stacked up on the front straightaway, I was just shooting for whatever hole was open and uh, kind of ping ponging and, and weaving my way through there. And I got all the way to the front row and I saw the 12 and 20 uh, side by side, side drafting and had a big head of steam on them. And honestly thought that I was gonna get to the start finish line before them. I, I when I crossed through the tri -oval, I thought we were gonna win the race. Uh, I was going so much faster than they were. And I just barely got clipped uh, by I think the 47 and spun across the start finish line and ended up third. So, um, I'm happy to finish uh, top five another week in a row, but felt like we were really close to winning that one. Thank you, Eric. If you have a question for Eric, please uh, click the raise your hand button or hit me with the uh, chat in the, uh, in the Zoom chat box. Uh, we'll start off with uh, Jeff Gluck from The Athletic. Go ahead, Jeff. Eric, I'm curious about how the revision to the rules package worked. I mean, it seemed like it, it was a really good race. <clears throat> were, were the runs just less enough that – you guys could race a little bit more without having to worry about running over each other? Yeah, the, the runs did seem uh, a little slower. Um, the other thing I noticed was uh, with the cars going a little bit slower, um, you know, we didn't get the typical single file out right around the fence. Um, we kind of stayed more packed up and, and together, uh, which, you know, to me, I thought there was going to be more wrecks because of it. Uh, which is why, you know, early in the race, I, I saw what I had in my race car. I thought I had a really fast car. And so I chose to just kind of ride around and survive. Um, you know, these races uh, usually have a lot of attrition, a lot of wrecks, and the big one. And so I thought, uh, you know, our strategy was to make sure we were, we were there at the end. Um, and we did that, but uh, the, the package um, seemed to keep the cars a lot closer together, and, and nobody really broke away. Next up, we'll go to uh, J Jordan Bianchi from the Atlanta. Go ahead, Jordan. Hi, Eric. I was wondering if you could take me through the last, you know, 12 hours or so with the drivers, uh, how you guys learned about what happened yesterday in the garage, uh, what the communication was like, and how you guys decided to uh, do what you guys did before the race. Yeah, well, I got to be honest. I'm not uh, extremely active on social media or, or with the news in general. Uh, I tend to live in my own little bubble uh, with my wife and kids, and um, <laughs> I'm I hate to admit that to you journalists, but uh, that's, that's just the truth. So uh, I actually didn't find out till I got on the plane uh, to come here uh, this morning about 10 o'clock, uh, I, I found out. And my immediate reaction was just speechless. I, I couldn't believe uh, that somebody would do that. Um, I didn't know really what to think um, other than there's just a lot of sadness. Uh, there's a lot of hurt people and there's a lot of sadness. And uh, I know uh, just from my 36 years of experience on this earth that hurt people hurt people. Um, happy people don't hurt people. So um, you see people lash out and, uh, you know, show signs of evil and, and darkness. Uh, and, it, and it just comes from a bad place. And, uh, you know, I think the most important thing you can respond with with that is light and love um, and, and showing, um, you know, how to, how to stand up and, and how to show positivity and, and have a heart. And I feel like that as, a, as an industry, that's what we did today. Do you know who was involved, who, who was responsible for putting that together on the driver's side? Uh, well, it was a collective effort. Um, they, they started on the group me chat of what are we going to do? How are we going to stand together? Um, and everybody, uh, you know, with the, I'll, I stand with Bubba, um, kind of came together and said, well, let's, let's literally stand with him, um, and show our support collectively, 
um, as a unit. And so, yeah, everybody, everybody jumped on board. Thank you. Let's go to Mark Garrow. Go ahead, Mark. Thank you. Uh, congratulations on a great race, Eric. What was it like when you were standing with Bubba, when you guys were walking the, the car down pit lane? What did, what did, what were some of the emotions that you were feeling or you were sensing around you? Uh, it was, it was a lot of emotion. I think that we were all just proud to be together. You know, I think, um, as competitors, we all want to beat each other, but as human beings, um, we all want to show love and support for each other. I think that that's one thing about our NASCAR community, um, that has always stood out is that regardless of what happens on the racetrack, off the racetrack, we're a family and we all support each other. Uh, you see it when we put fundraisers on or foundation events. Um, we all show up and, and we all support each other because we're a family. We live next door to each other, you know, 38 weeks a year in the motorhome lot. And uh, when you see a, a brother that's being singled out and that's being hurt, um, you, you want you want to show love and you want to show support. And for me, um, it was just a great reminder of why to have faith. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm a strong believer in Christ and, and God. And I, I think that, uh, you know, as, as brothers of the human race, we gotta, we gotta stand up for each other and love each other, um, and, and show that we won't stand for somebody, um, uh, being hurt in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll go to uh, Zach Sterniello. Zach. Eric, congrats on the run today. Uh, with Pocono okay. coming up next weekend, uh, would you like to see NASCAR do or continue to do anything to um, to prevent something like this from happening? And obviously, this is uh, such a uh, a unique, awful circumstance mm -hmm. that uh, I wouldn't anticipate seeing again. But um, it, would you like to see NASCAR make any changes going forward, um, or what, either to prevent this or to protect Bubba? I, I think they're doing it. Um, he saw the response um, immediately upon them finding out. Uh, they have um, they have deployed all resources to try and figure out uh, how it happened um, and, and who did it and to rectify it and to make sure that whoever that person is um, – you know, never participates in our sport again because we don't have room for those people. And on top of that, um, you know, I think that sets the precedence and the tone uh, going forward that uh, this is not something that's a joke. It's not something that we will take lightly. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a serious matter. And I think NASCAR uh, has done an incredible job of uh, navigating these last several weeks. Thank you. Final question we'll take from Dustin Long from NBC. Go ahead, Dustin. Thank you. Eric, uh, you, you've been in the sport long enough and you've seen the sport uh, through the years. I'm curious how you view how the sport's evolved, how you guys have drivers evolved, uh, and what you guys have done the last two weeks compared to, you know, even earlier in your career. Uh, and that's not to slight anybody, but I'm just curious how you've seen how you guys have become more socially aware and more willing to speak up than maybe years ago yeah so personally and and i'm gonna do my best to not make this about me because this is not about me i'll make that very clear um but i came through the diversity program i would not have the opportunity to be sitting here in front of you today if it wasn't for reggie white a black NFL football player who decided to put together a diversity program with Joe Gibbs and Joe Gibbs Racing. And that's how I got my opportunity because I'm a Cuban American and my dad and, and his whole side of the family came from Cuba in 1966. And so growing up trying to race as a Cuban American, sure, I've had things uh, said to me, um, things that were offensive and that hurt. And so I've, I actually told Bubba this morning um, that on a very, very small scale, I can relate and I can empathize, um, but I have never had to go through what he's had to go through um, these last couple of weeks and especially in the last 24 hours. And I feel for him immensely. 
Um, and, and I think that the sport has worked so hard since I got my opportunity in, in 2004 um, to adapt. You know, I think forever NASCAR has been considered an all-American sport. And all of America has changed and evolved a lot um, over time. And, and I think that NASCAR has done an incredible job of being inclusive and making sure that the garage area, the, um, you know, the spectators, the fan area, that they all resemble all of America. Um, and I have been so proud to be a part of that initiative and that drive. And again, I am making this very clear. This is not about me. I'm just saying that I have had a firsthand look at it from the very beginning when NASCAR started the whole diversity program and the drive for diversity. And I have gotten so much opportunity because of that. And I am so grateful and so thankful. And they continue to adapt and evolve and make our sport a more inclusive sport where people can feel welcome. If you like race cars and fast race cars and the adrenaline rush of cars going 200 miles an hour side by side, like you saw today, you should be able to come and be a part of it, whether as a competitor or as a spectator um, and, and, and participate and enjoy it. Eric, uh, I, I know you mentioned Reg, Reggie White, and obviously, you know, his involvement, unfortunately, was cut short with his death. But on a day, on a weekend like this, um, to where the sport came together and, and where you, as somebody who came, was able to come in the sport because of Reggie White's involvement, what does it mean that, that even now, years later, that there's still an impact of, of what Reggie did that maybe, maybe many people overlook? Well, I just... Um... I feel lucky and I feel fortunate uh, that somebody would step up and step out like he did um, and, and to start the program that he did. Um, you know, he, he Reggie, uh, the very first time I met him, he said, look, this, the, the reason I'm doing this is because I love race cars. Like I love cars and I love watching racing and coming with coach to watch a few of these NASCAR races. I fell in love. And I want to start a team and I want to give a driver or drivers or crew members opportunity from the grassroots level to work their way into the system. And that is exactly how I got my opportunity. And, and I'm so proud of him and his wife, Sarah. Um, and Max Siegel was a part of that when it all started. And, and all of those people, um, along with JD and Joe Gibbs, uh, put that program together and started really the diversity program. Uh, and I got to be the lucky person that got to uh, fulfill my dreams because of that. Thank you. Eric, thank you so much for your time and your great comments. Uh, have a safe trip back to Charlotte. Thank Good you guys. Thanks guys.